Today we won't do any coding, today we'll have introductory lesson to let you understand what this training course is about and what we'll learn. Here is our agenda for today. So first of all, I want to be completely honest and transparent with you. Nobody would hire you just because you know Java history. But still, I think this is part of your general education as a software engineer and will be interesting for you to know. Java was started as a project called Org by James Gosling in June 1991. Gosling's goal were to implement a virtual machine and a language that had a familiar C-like notation but with greater uniformity and simplicity than C or C++. The first public implementation was Java version 1 in 1995. Org was renamed as Java because it was already a trademark by Org Technologies. Java made the promise of write once, run anywhere, with free runtimes on all popular platforms. Major web browsers soon incorporated it into their standard configuration in secure applet configuration. Java considered to be one of the most popular programming languages nowadays. A lot of people who are choosing which programming language to learn first opt for Java. Platform independence, multi-threading, security, easiness to learn – some of the reasons of this. Back that time Sun Microsystems supported Java development. But Sun Microsystems was acquired by Oracle in January 2010. From that time Oracle supports and developed Java as a platform. You will notice that official Java documentation is located on Oracle resources. So if you just start to learn programming you might be wondering why you should start learning Java? What advantages does it have over other programming languages? Here are a few reasons. Probably the first reason is, Java is easy to learn. Java doesn't require you to know anything about memory management to get started. You don't need to worry how to locate memory for data, how to release memory afterwards. GVM and garbage collector are in charge of all memory management instead of you. Java is simpler, the syntax is much more readable than C, C++ or any other language. Java is strongly typed language, which catches many newbie mistakes. Java source code should be compiled to the bytecode. Java compiler won't let you to compile code which will contain broken syntax or wouldn't be executed on GVM. Also Java compiler will point out where exactly you have mistakes. That helps a lot to junior developers. Java can do everything. By saying this I mean with Java you'll have a tool which will allow you to create applications of any level of complexity. You will be able to implement mobile applications, desktop applications and complex enterprise solutions. Huge community. And how this can help you? Let me explain. Java has strong community support. No matter what kind of questions, doubt or issue you have, Google can find answers for you. If not Google, then Stack Overflow, Java forums and a lot of other communities are there to help you out. This is really the single biggest reason I suggest beginners learn to code using Java, because when you are starting to learn to program, you'll face with many different kinds of issues to understand for both programming fundamentals and Java. Because there are millions of Java developers around and big community is there to support, most likely you'll find answers quickly without getting frustrated and disappointed. Another reason to learn Java is Android. I won't lie to you because I don't know the exact numbers, but I think you would agree with me that Android is most popular operating system for mobile devices in the world. If I am not mistaken, around 70% of mobile devices are powered by Android. I rent a car recently during the business trip and it was Android Auto inside it. I went to the electronics store and there is a fridge with computer built in and it was also powered by Android. What does it mean for you? That means knowing Java you have a lot of job opportunities. GVM A lot of modern languages realize that it is a good idea to use Java virtual machine to execute own programs. Because it's reliable, because it works fast, etc. That's why such languages as Scala, Kotlin, Groovy also use Java virtual machine to execute programs. For you it means that knowing how GVM works it would be easier to get up to speed with other languages. One of the biggest Java advantages is platform independence. Companies don't want to invest money to create program for Mac operating system only. And after that spend more money to create applications for Windows based systems. 
That's why a lot of companies opt for Java for own projects. We partially touched this topic quickly during the previous slide, but answering your question, what you will be able to implement with Java? The answer is with Java you will be able to implement mobile, desktop and web applications. And no matter what you would read in the internet, trust me, even today companies still create desktop applications for different purposes. And Java is also one of the best options for such purposes. So today you heard a lot about GVM. Let's take a closer look what GVM, GRE and GDK are. GVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. This is program written in C++ which is responsible for converting bytecode to machine-specific code. GVM is the reason why Java as language considered to be platform independent. You will compile your source code to Java bytecode. After that you execute your bytecode on GVM. And there are a lot of implementations of GVM for different operating systems. So to execute Java code on Macbook you just need GVM for Mac operating system installed there. To run bytecode on Windows you just need GVM for Windows operating system installed there. The GVM is used for both, translate the bytecode into the machine language for a particular computer and actually execute the corresponding machine language instructions as well. Without the GVM you can't run a Java application. GRE stands for Java Runtime Environment. GRE includes GVM in itself plus Java binaries and classes which are needed to execute program. Back in past I developed desktop application which I used to sell in the internet. To make this application run on the computers of my clients I added GRE to my installation file. That's what I needed to do to not force my clients to install Java by themselves. GDK stands for Java Development Kit. GDK contains GVM and GRE plus all tools which are necessary for development of Java programs. For example you need to have compiler to compile your Java source code to bytecode. Compiler goes with GDK but not included in GRE. Now let's pretend you need to debug your application line by line. You have debugger in GDK because it is not needed in GRE. Or you want to create documentation out from your source code. In GDK you have Java doc program which will generate documentation from your source code. So if you are a developer you need GDK. We'll download and install GDK in the next lesson. That is all what I got for you for today. Let's take a look at your homework. Your first homework wouldn't be very complicated. Here's a list of recommended literature and books to read during the training course. You can find them in the Google and download is a PDF version or to buy hard copy. Here is also a chapter to read by the next lesson. During the video lessons definitely I will cover core concepts, best practices, but still I would optionally recommend you to read books to have different point of view on the same topics.